Hi, today we're going to talk about dummy variables and using categorical variables in your regression model, be it ordinary least square or logit, logistic or um, other regression models. Now, when you have categorical variables and you're using dummy variables, you generally tend to have a reference group. So that's what we're going to discuss today. All right. Now, uh, let's open the database. You can find the link under this video. And uh, what we're going to uh, try and explain today is, uh, let's think about a regression where we're trying to explain the number of children that a family has. Right. And uh, so there's a variable here called V201, which is total children ever born in the family. Yeah. So we see that we have 935 observations, and this is the average or mean number of children that a household has in this data set. Now, so we just summarize this. Uh, this is the variable we'll be using, and I'm going to just uh, generate a variable called children is equal to v201, so that I'm not uh, messing around with the original variable here. Uh, so that's generated a variable. If you look at the bottom here, that's the variable child, uh, children. So let's say uh, we want to see how wealth affects the number of children that our family has. Uh, there is a variable here, which is, it's a categorical variable for wealth, and the wealth index is V190. So let's tabulate that. And what we see is that there are five categories uh, for the wealth index. Now we can use uh, the command code book to find out different categories in the wealth index have been coded. Yeah, so it goes from one, which is the poorest household, to five, which is the richest household. So as the uh, wealth uh, level increases for the household, the numeric values increase as well, right? So it's an ascending order. So if we were to regress the number of children a family has onto the wealth index, and I'm just going to put V190, and V190 is increasing in the wealth category, what we observe here is that we have two results that have been reported. One is the wealth index. And as it seems that as wealth increases, the number of children a family has decreases. Now there's another uh, variable here, which is constant. Now we didn't add that constant here in the regression. Well, that is added by data by default. Yeah. And so what is this constant? Well, if you were to draw this in a graphical form, this is telling you what the intercept is on the y-axis, and this is telling you what the slope is. As wealth increases, how does it affect the y variable, which is children, and the wealth is on the x-axis, so this is the intercept. So let's see how this constant is created. Now, if I was to create a constant of my own, uh, let's say a variable called constant, and if I say one, that's really what the constant is. It's Stata is running a regression. It is trying to regress children on v190, and another variable, which is ones, and that is what it is reporting here as constant. Yeah. So the, the command that you can use uh, if you don't want Stata to use constant is, hey, uh, run regression on children v190, and please do not include a constant. Yeah. So and when you do that, you see that it hasn't included a constant, and this is what you see as your regression uh, result. Now, if you were to draw this on a graph, y and x axes, this is starting from the origin. Now, so what is this constant? Well, very easy to see. Regress children, 1, 9, 0. Let's put the one that we have created, the constant, and say so no constant. And we should have the same result, 3.73, 3.73 here. It means that when Stata runs a regression, children on wealth, it includes uh, another variable which takes the value of 1. Yeah? And that is reported as a constant. And this is just well, 1. So if you put other x variables that add up to 1, then there would be multiple linearity. We'll come back to that again. Right? So now what I want to do is, when you look at this result up here, and let me just uh, do the uh, uh, default regression so that we can move on. V190, here we go. So what we see here is that it gives us a coefficient, right? So what this is saying is if the wealth index, if the household moves from the poorest to poorer household, there's an increase, a change in the total children born by this amount, right? This is a coefficient. And we have restricted such that 
whether the family moves from the poorest to poor change by one or the family the household moves from the middle income group to richer the change in the total children born it's the same so you've restricted that now it would make sense for us to think that the change would be different when you move from poorest to poor household as compared to moving from say richer to richest or middle to richer income right so what we want to do is create dummy variables and how do you do that well you can tabulate v190 and we want to now generate so let's put the command gen let's call it wlth short form of for wealth okay so now if you look here we have all these variables that have been generated and all these are dummy variables we can check that by browsing our data set let's say hey can you please browse wealth all the variables related to wealth so this star is telling Strata to pick everything all the variables that start with wealth so wealth one two three four five and i also want to put v190 because i want to see double check if this is correct so what we see is for the richest household wealth five takes a value of one yeah and zero otherwise so all these are now dummy variables yeah? now if we were to include all this in our regression reg children born and we want to vault one to vault five and remember state uh, we are asking stata to regress children on these x variables stata by default is also going to put a constant right now, what happens when you add all these x variables from wealth 1 to wealth 5? They add up to 1, which is the same as your constant. And hence, what you have here is multicollinearity. And in order to avoid that, Stata drops one of the variable. Just to show you what I mean, let's just say, uh, what are we talking about? And let's just uh, add these. Sorry. wealth 4 and wealth 5. So you've created a variable called uh, what and that is adding up all the x variables that you put in. Yeah. So now what I want to do is I want to browse all this. Yeah. So what we see is that the what is it adds up to a value of 1 which is the same as the constant that Stata puts in by default. Yeah. So you have multicollinearity and as a result it drops one run the regression without any constant all right without a constant yeah and so this is the regression what we see is that and now you are regressing it on wealth one to wealth five we don't have an issue of multicollinearity because we asked here to run this uh without the constant yeah what happens when you include a constant and i want to drop one I don't want Stata to choose one for me. I want to drop one myself so that I can control the narrative of this story. Yeah. And I want to drop the poorest household. So that becomes my reference group. So when you run this regression, what do we observe here? Well, the constant is 3.33, which is nothing but the coefficient of the wealth, one variable. So whichever you drop gets picked up by the constant. What about the other categories? Let's look at the wealth two category. This is minus 0.45, which is, what is that? It is 2.875 minus the wealth one category. So here, this coefficient is picking up. How does the coefficient for wealth category different from the one that you dropped, the reference group? Yeah, so now these results are in reference to the one that you dropped, which is the poorest household category. And this is the difference between wealth 1 and wealth 2. Similarly, when you look at wealth 3, that is the difference between your wealth 1 and wealth 3. What happens? Let's see what happens if you drop, instead of wealth 1, you actually drop wealth 5. So now you're turning the richest household as your reference group. So when you drop wealth five, it is picked up by this constant. And now the coefficient for wealth one is the difference between wealth one and wealth five. So it's 3.33 minus 2.28 and change. Yeah. So that's what this is picking up. 
So when you interpret these results, when you have categorical variables, this is telling you how compared to the reference group R is the average different for this category. Yeah. So in general, which one should you drop? Whichever makes it easier for you to tell the story. Yeah. Generally speaking, for wealth, I like to drop the poorest because it makes sense for us to say, hey, as income increases, uh, what happens to, yeah, as income increases, the number of children born in a household actually decreases, yeah, because this is a negative coefficient here.